60 minutes overtime. All right, I'm finished, but I know Sherry's going to come in here and tell me I'm not. This is Sherry Finkelstein, who is one of the great producers at 60 Minutes and has been on my team for almost 22 years. Ah. What do you call these patterns? Well, I'll tell you something about Sherry. She's not going to present a story to 60 Minutes where there hasn't been an interesting development, not just a change, but an interesting change. Is this okay? This week, Sherry and I have a story uh, that we've been following for a long time. We did a story 10 years ago? 10 years ago. Neuroscience research into how we think and what Shari we're stays in touch with Dr. Just and has over the years. When we did our original story, it was this breakthrough that they could look inside the brain while people were in an MRI scanner thinking different thoughts, and they could tell which things they were thinking about. You had them think about a screwdriver, mm -hmm. and the computer found the place in the brain where that person was thinking screwdriver? Screwdriver isn't one place in the brain. But it was very simple thoughts, it was objects. And then over the years they expanded it and they did emotions and they did really abstract ideas. But then at a certain point they took this sort of leap and started looking at autism. And then they had done a study of people contemplating suicide. And I felt like that was the time when I felt ready to go to Leslie and say, hey, I think it's gone to this whole whole nother levels and let's go back. And yeah. it was a big leap from the first time we went. The research does progress. Yes. And we want to bring the next chapter to the American people, but sometimes it's just interesting human beings. Oh. Is that Hi, Rex? Hi, Rex, uh, how are you? One of the people we followed up on was a young boy named Rex, who we met originally <laughs> when he was eight years old. He's blind and has some profound uh, cognitive disabilities, but is an absolutely fabulous pianist and has some savant-like abilities. And he also happened to be an adorable and charming, warm little boy. And we really wanted to follow and see what would happen as he got a little older. And it was fascinating, too, to see over the years. So we did a, our first story when he was eight. Then we did one when he was 10. And then we did another one when he was 13. Oh. <laughs> he was so adorable as a little boy. What happens when that little boy grows up and he's not adorable anymore? While he was so talented, he was still drawing audiences. And that was another part of why we wanted to go back. So it's always fascinating to see where our subjects have moved to, particularly the ones in science. 1982, I got them April the 9th, so that was a Friday. We've done a lot of stories on memory. We did one on, a, on <laughs> people who uh, remember every day of their lives. A 7.1 earthquake hit the San Francisco, Oakland area on October 17, 17, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, Tuesday. Well, that was an interesting example of where our story actually led to the scientists discovering a bunch more people. Because people saw the piece, came forward, they found 50 okay. more adults, but they Quiz. also found a child who had this ability. What happened, related to school, on January 30th, 2013? That day, I'm pretty sure... Oh, wait. That's a trick question. We didn't have school that day. <laughs> I think for us to go back and do another story, it can't just be, oh, there's an interesting thing that happened. A bunch more people have this. It has to sort of go even further. Every once in a while, we come across someone with an amazing ability. I think this is our most remarkable follow-up was this man named Bob Petrella. And when we were doing our first story, we were filming just sort of what was going to be a routine interaction between the scientist who was studying these people and this man, Bob Petrella, where he was going to be quizzing him and sort of exploring his memory. So Bob Petrella is a sports fan. And somewhere in the course of it, the conversation goes to the fact that Bob Petrella, as a 13-year-old, had created an imaginary basketball team. Who were the starting forwards in 1983? The starting forwards in 83 were Otis Pukki and Brad Jasmine. How yep. tall were they? Otis Pukki was 6'6", and uh, Brad Jasmine was undersized at 6'5", but real bulky. And he had 
this entire basketball league with all these fictional characters that he had created <laughs> in his head. But he would remember every game that they had played. After we decided we really wanted to do it, I went to our executive producer and said, so <laughs> Leslie and I want to do this follow-up story. Bear with me. It's about an, an imaginary basketball team. I started with Don Hewitt at 60 Minutes, who was the original creator of the broadcast. And he was not a fan of follow-up pieces. He felt, <laughs> we've done that story and move on. I guess it just shows you that the person at the top really can affect the taste of the broadcast. What kinds of pieces, and in this case, what follow-ups are not. We have to be convinced that they progressed enough that it would stand on its own as a fascinating 60-minute story.